and welcome. Welcome to the world where we talk about gardens and we talk about how to get you growing and how to get your garden maybe performing better this year. We even just talk about the world of plants, what's happening as well, even a little bit about weather. For those that don't know who I am, this guy, yeah, this guy with the two thumbs right here, his name is Frank Ferragini, aka Frankie Flowers. I'm a four-time best-selling garden author. I would say that I'm a garden expert. Yes, indeed. I have several thousand hours of gardening uh, knowledge, advice, and work, uh, design, uh, consultation, you name it, speaking, uh, as I mentioned, four books each and every day. You can see me live on breakfast television, Monday from through Friday, 6 to 10 a.m., where I'm wild about weather. Yeah, forecast weather. Weather. I'm passionate about plants. You can also see me on City Line, and I come here mostly on Sunday nights at 7 to help you with your garden. But last night was family time, so today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, gardening on a Monday night. So if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. If you put them in the comments, I'll do my best to answer those questions and with that, we can also have a little bit of a discussion about plants themselves. So hopefully everybody out there is hearing me right now. And right away, we have a, a question right away from Mitch or Mish. Uh, I've started sweet pea flowers from seed. Should I pinch them back? Yes, you've started them a little bit early. Those guys there are fairly quick to germinate. Uh, sometimes you can even be doing the sweet peas as a direct sow into the garden where you're soaking them and around late April, you directly sow them into the garden. But because you have sowed them indoors, you can give them some pinching. By pinching them back, you'll actually strengthen them up uh, and just cut back. Don't keep them too watered. Put them in an area of bright light as well. And if you have a room that's on the cooler side, it's way better. Those guys like to be grown cold, so that's better. So if you have a room that at night gets a little bit cooler or that room itself is bright, but even if it's just a little bit cooler than what your normal house is, around 15 degrees, it'll do very well for you. Uh, we got Lacey from Oshawa giving us a little shout out this evening, saying good evening. Good evening to you from the Choise. We got Chris saying, hey, Frank. Hey, back to you, Chris. Uh, we got Janice this, uh, this evening as well, giving us a shout out from Georgetown. We got Mimi or Meme. Uh, when is the best time to prune a lilac tree? Uh, because it takes a lilac to develop its blooms for the entire season. So it bloomed last year. And as it's growing after its bloom period, it's actually developing buds. So those flower buds for this year are sitting there. So the best time to prune a lilac is after it flowers. That is the best time. If we were to prune now, we would be removing the flowers. However, if it does have any broken branches, this is the time to cut those off. If you see any dead wood, wood that's maybe a little bit older and dead in the center of that plant, you can cut and clean that out right now. But the overall structural pruning, we wait till after bloom for that. Uh, we got an evening as well uh, from Oakville, is it too early to trim a cedar hedge? Uh, we, When I look at the forecasted highs over the next little bit, we are pretty good. I would wait maybe another seven days just to be on the safe side. And then I'd be doing some pruning. The weather this week in the Southern Ontario region is pretty terrible too. So you wouldn't be out there doing any of that as well. We got Rebecca saying hello from Lindsay this evening. Hello to you. Uh, we got uh, Valerie. Valerie, Valerie, Valerie. What's your question? Hello, Boxwood. What what do they what to do if they look dry? They're beside my Annabella hydrangeas, and I sprayed them with uh, B, that would be the uh, bug spray, which is the BTK, Bacillus thuringiensis, which would be taking care of uh, some of the moth that we've been seeing, the box moth that we've been seeing. Can I use on boxwoods? Yes, the B the BK12. It should be BTK. You can use that on the boxwoods if that's the issue. The browning on box was, could be caused by the box moth. Um, that's more so a little bit later on, but you can still see the damage right now. Or the browning has been caused by winter burn, moisture loss in the winter. So it'd be really great to take a picture of those and send it to me, frankie at frankieflowers.com, and I can see whether it's winter burn damage or if it's damage from the box moth. The box moth, when it gets to its larvae stage, when it gets to the caterpillar stage, that's when we can use the BTK spray. That BTK spray is actually a bacteria that we can spray and actually help uh, cure. There's a lot of information on box moth. So if you go on Google and just type in, as it sounds, box is one word, moth is the other word, you will find a ton of information right there. CJ saying, yo, saying actually, hey, Frankie, just want to wish you a happy Easter. You hope you had a good one. I had a great Easter weekend. Uh, my boys finally got out for their last ski yesterday at Mount St. Louis Moonstone. Uh, they're pretty sad about that, but... Uh, they're pretty happy to be looking forward to spring as well. We got Liz. Hi, Liz. I'm just going to take it. Miss moving some daffodil balls last fall from the garden that is being dug up. 
Can I safely move them now as they emerge? Hmm. You can move them now. What you want to do is take a whole bunch of soil with them and just plunk them over in the soil, not disturbing the root ball whatsoever. And they should do well. There's always a risk. Whenever we're moving anything, there's going to be a risk. But as long as we're doing it, like for instance, this week's going to be a fairly wet week. So tomorrow morning, we should be dry up until about the noon hour. If you have a chance to do it tomorrow morning, it would be ideal. So you can actually move them while trying not to disturb the soil. You put them into their new location and we're going to get a whole bunch of rain throughout the week. So they won't go through too much shock whatsoever at all. So, hey, just before we get to some other questions, I want to show you guys uh, what's growing on. I'm just going to uh, pop this down here and share my screen. Just want to make you aware of some of the different things that we have going on over this month. And those are some of the different events that you will be seeing Frankie Flowers at. If this thing is going to pop up, will it pop up? Let's see if it's going to pop up. I'm finding that my this whole system is being a little bit weird, a little bit weird. So is this going to work for me? I don't know if it's going to work for me tonight, but I wanted to let you guys know I had something prepared for you. Oh, I hate when technology doesn't work, but okay. We just got to go with what we got to go with. Just let you know that next week I will be, well, actually this weekend, April the 6th, you can see me at the uh, Oakville Home Show, the Oakville Home Show, Saturday, April the 6th. I will be there at two o'clock. Um, that is at, um, where is that one again? I just got to look at this myself so I can remember where it is. Uh, the Oakville Home Show is at Glen Abbey Community Center. So once again, I'll be there at six o'clock. Also to let others know that if you're in the Burlington area on April the 20th at 2 p.m., you can see me at the Burlington Home Show. That's going to be at the Apple, uh, the Appleby Ice Center. Then as well, you can see me at the Milton Home Show on April the 27th. That'll be at two o'clock, but you can also, if you're in the Collingwood area, see me on April the 28th at the Collingwood Home Show. And then finally, I also want to let you know that Scott's Miracle Grow, our friends at Scott's Miracle Grow, are going to do a little bit of a giveaway because it's seed starting season. So if you want your chance to win a bag of seed starting potting mix, you'll also with that get some of the Miracle Grow seed starting plant food, which is a brand new, amazing product for this year. And you'll get a seed tray. To enter, all you have to do is hit share on this. So if you're watching us on Facebook, you just go down on the share that's on the bottom. Or if you go to frankieflowers.com and join the newsletter, you will be entered in to win that giveaway from Scott's Miracle Grow. And I want to thank Scott's Miracle Grow from that. We got uh, Ashley Brown that's given us a little bit of a comment out there. Happy Easter, Frankie. So excited to get my hands dirty this weekend. Just a little cleaning out the planters. Don't worry. Bugs are safe in the garden still. Awesome. Yes, there are sometimes leaving a little bit of debris in the garden while we're at cooler temperatures gives a little bit of some protection and habitat for some of the good pollinating and some of the beneficial insects that are out there. So just a reminder about that as well. We got Judy. Uh, hi, Judy. How's Judy? Good evening, Frankie. Question is, my snake plant has round, brown, runny spots on one of the stalks. Is this an issue? Thank you. Happy spring. So we have the snake plant right beside me here. Um, so snake plants, uh, also known as mother-in-law's tongue because they're really hard to kill, also known as sensivaria. I'm just going to hit cancel here. These guys here are pretty easy overall. Sometimes when we see some of the spotting and or patching on the leaves is usually due to overwater. It's rarely underwater. It's generally overwater. So that's the reason uh, why that is happening. Oh, what's going on here? I got to stop my... Uh, stop sharing. Sorry, guys. The system's got, it's, it's, it's lagging today a little bit. So I just got to get myself back up there. So you should be able to see me soon, but you can probably still hear me. That's the main thing. Maybe you'll not be able to see me, but you can still hear me. So the snake plant, by the way, as I mentioned, it's most likely the reason why it has those spots is due to overwatering. So what I would do is cut back on the watering and I'd actually even remove that stem. So that'd probably the best be the best thing that you can do for that guy that's there. We got Anne that's giving us a happy Easter out there as well this evening. And oh, what the heck is going on? Is this thing freezing up on me? Ugh. Frustrating today. There we go. We're back again. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Technology these days. I'm telling you, you think it's all going to be good and then sometimes it's not good at all. But let's get back to some questions, guys, because we got Judy Miller out there this evening. Judy, Judy, what's going on? My tomato seeds are leaving uh, the seed, holding the seed and not falling off. What to do? Take off the seed. Is it hard not to get some of the leaves? Thanks. So what she's saying is that 
when the seed is germinating, there is a little bit of the seed pod that's still sitting on that newly germinated tomato plant. You know, you can let it be because as soon as that, that leaf that's on there will get a little bit larger, it'll actually push the seed away. You got to look at greenhouses. Uh, you know, we do several thousands, actually hundreds and millions of plants, hundreds of thousands and millions of plants. We actually do millions and we don't have the time to go around and pluck all those seeds off. So we just let them be and they'll be fine. If by chance you decide that you it's irritating you and you want to give it a little bit extra help, just get a pair of tweezers and just lightly give it a little bit of a tug and it'll tug off with these. But if it feels like it's going to be forced, don't move it because you could break a, uh, one of those off and that would be uh, a little bit harmful. Uh, CJ's asking, is it too... Is it too early to be raking the yard? So number one, when you're going out to step on your lawn, if it's spongy underfoot and still soggy, if we were to go rake the lawn and do those things, then we'd actually create compaction. So as long as the lawn is firm underfoot, it's not too early to rake the lawn. The reason why we're raking lawn is to move off any broken branches and or leaves that are on the lawn, but also we may be raking the lawn to remove thatch. If you're wondering what thatch is, if we look at a lawn, if we were to look at your grass and we see the green top, and then just below, right beside the soil. So just as we get to the soil, just above that soil level, you'll see a little area where it looks like dried grass, almost like a, a light brownish to white grass. That is thatch. Thatch is a, of a harm and of a benefit. If we have too much thatch, so if we have over half an inch of thatch, it's too much. Uh, and that's even just like three or four centimeters. If we have too much, too much more than that, it's too much. But if we have around that range, it's good because it actually will help retain moisture and it'll actually help for the decomposition and be benefit. So we will dethatch a lawn, uh, but sometimes we don't need to dethatch a lawn. So it's always a good idea to look at how much thatch that you have. We have Mike here this evening as well. Mike, hostas, do I need to do anything for them in spring? Will they just bounce back from last year? Hostas are amazing plants. They're a perennial plant that does well in shade. The only thing with hostas is about three to five years, you'll start to see them get quite big and maybe mound out and they're not looking as vibrant. So in the spring, as soon as they sprout up, is a fantastic time of year to take one of those big root masses out because that's what will happen when they start to grow. They'll actually almost double in size each year. You take one of those out and we can divide it. And as long as we have three little eyes, so there's three little sprouts per section when we're dividing, three to five of those, we can create divisions. And by dividing it, it's going to give it a new lease on life, a new spark on life. You're going to get more hostas and you'll have more vibrant plants that are out there. So if it's fairly planted freshly, like fairly new planting, and you uh, and it looks like it's healthy and vibrant, no, you just want to clean off any of the debris around it and you're, uh, you're off to the races. We got Tracy there. It's like, got to love technology. Yeah. You know, this whole streaming has been so good for me. Uh, and right now it's kind of being a little bit wonky. So I have to, uh, I'm going to have to do a little bit of troubleshooting after we're done this one to figure out what the heck is growing on. My service berry has rings around holes around the branches, worrisome or treatable. Uh, it's approximately, uh, 12 inches tall. So it has rings around holes around the branches. So are these round holes in the stems of the branches? Then it's a concern. If it's the round holes around the branches, I'm really not getting the description. So uh, Corinne or Corinne and Gordon, if you can send me a picture of Frankie at Frankie Flowers of what this looks like, we got to see that if there's something more like being a bore, boring into the plant, that's a concern. So we need to figure that out. Uh, good news is service berry is super tough. So sometimes we can actually even uh, prune them out here as well. Matthew Amos, shout out to you. He says that we, he can hear us. And he can see us also, which is really good. We got Carol Jones. Carol, how are you doing this evening? Uh, is Quebec still getting snow this week? Need to travel to Ontario and back. Yes, indeed. As, as soon as we get into uh, Wednesday and Thursday, temperatures will hover just above the freezing mark in, in areas like eastern Ontario and into Quebec. So there's a, a pretty good chance of seeing some snowfall and some messy road conditions. Tomorrow afternoon will be mostly a rain event, but Wednesday in through Thursday, we could have a rain snow mix even into Friday morning. So just be uh, careful about that. Matthew always likes to talk about movies. So even this is a garden pod, a little garden Q and A, we're all still talk about a movie. Me and my mom and my dad watched the new roadhouse with Jake Gyllenhaal on Sunday. I wanted to know if you've seen the new roadhouse with Jake Gyllenhaal. It's actually with Conor McGregor as well. It's, it's so 
it's so bad it's good if you know what i mean if you watch it you'll be like it's so bad but it's good you ever had those movies where they're so bad but they're good it's one of those uh valerie thanks matthew is by the way as well uh valerie frankie i love my bay leaf plant but have a hard time to grow it looks uh sticky and i sprayed it but it's just not growing my dad had a tree from this plant what is the secret so the stickiness that you're seeing on the bay tree is actually an insect and that insect is creating that residue and that honey that's there so what i would like you to do is to look on your bay plant and look on the little stems if you see little bumps on the stems you could have scale if you have scale which is quite common on bay plants then what we have to maybe do is take a little bit of alcohol swabs and almost pick those scale off the issue is even if we spray with that like a bug be gone the scale is actually a hard-shelled insect that the bug be gone won't be able to, to uh, pretty much soak and suffocate out so there has to be some other strategies for the scale sometimes even putting the bay plant out in the summer months other beneficial insects will come and actually eat some of the scale but we need to determine what insect is causing the stickiness on that bay plant once we remedy that, your bay plant will be off to the races and will be good overall. Uh, Judy, 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 Judy Miller. Uh, how long uh, do you leave your baby tomato and pepper plants under grow lights? Thanks. So the reason why we're putting under grow lights is if we don't have uh, an area in our home that has bright natural light, there's nothing better than natural light that we have. The grow lights are there if we can supplement the lighting, if we have more of a dark, dark area, but we need, if we're gonna be planting them outdoors, we need to trans, uh, transition them over to natural light. So as soon as the, those plants get to be, um, where you're seeing them almost at about, say like that. So let's say that we're just under, we're about four inches in height. It's a nice bushy plant because we don't want them to stretch because sometimes under the lights, they can stretch. We would wanna put them in a room that's nice and bright, we want that room to be a little bit cooler at night. And then as we start to get near the end of this month and the end of April, we're going to start to gradually be putting them outdoors first in part sun, cooling them off, harding them off, and then putting them into full sun to adjust them to the light levels. Seed starting is amazing, but it can be a ton of work. You can see that. So in with tomatoes, just let you know, one tomato plant feeds a family of four. So right now, if you're a family of two, and you have 24 tomato plants, you got to give some tomato plants away. Uh, Tracy Reynolds, our favorite florist there that always likes to log in with us. Happy Monday. Great job as always, Frankie. Thank you. Uh, Ashley is asking me about Grub Be Gone. Is it too early for Grub Be Gone? Because we had such a warm year this year, the grubs are fairly high in the, in the ground. Uh, so as long as like this week, we have a lot of rain that's coming, I'd be more, it's not too early, but I would be, I would recommend more towards the end of the month would be the benefit. Cause I know Ashley, you're up in Aurelia there. So your soil temperature still could be a little bit colder that are up there as well. We got Mike that says, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you, Mike. Yes, indeed. We got uh, Sherry giving a comment on hostas. Hostas are the best. They're so easy. There's so many varieties of hostas. Like you can get the one with the really small leaves called bunny ears. Little, little tiny thing and then you can get ones with huge leaves like some in substance or big daddy big daddy is one of my favorite big blue leaves amazing so they come in many different shapes and sizes leaf colors and for shade they are fantastic by the way uh we got ashley asking another question no problem ashley hmm. is it okay to transplant lilac tree right now or should we wait until after they flower no perfect time they're just coming out of dormancy at this period of time. It would be an amazing, wonderful time to be transplanting at this time. Uh, you could use a transplant fertilizer like a Quick Start. miracle Grow Quick Start fertilizer will help out. Uh, if you get a chance, I don't know if you guys have some time. Ashley's family runs a bike shop. But tomorrow morning, if this is something like right before all this rain and whatnot that we're getting, it could be really good. But you could also do it over the weekend as well. Uh, we got somebody that's going to send me an email. She's going to try to send me an email about that plant okay that'd be great so frankie at frankieflowers.com just do your best uh sherry rose is asking a question this evening as well is it true to spray, spray ammonium water mixture around sprouts of hostas to prevent slugs you know there's a lot of folklore ammonia of course is bleach um the water mixture around the the, the sprouts of hostas it's not really going to do much uh, it won't it may kill if there's some existing little larvae that's there like some existing eggs of slugs, but really 
um, those slugs are not going to be around the sprouts of the hostas. They'll be in other areas where they're protected, uh, more sheltered and shaded, uh, and mostly sometimes even under wood piles and, and whatnot. The key about controlling slugs around hostas is really one big control mechanism is when we water. So if we water our gardens later in the day and they sit wet at night, then all of a sudden in the summer, we have a wet, dark, warm garden. And that is the perfect breeding ground for slugs. That's what slugs love. And slugs are hermaphrodites, meaning a slug has male and female parts on it. So it can have sex with itself. It doesn't need to have a relationship. It doesn't need to buy dinner. It can just have sex and breed. And that's why when they have a warm, wet garden at night, they breed and they breed a lot. So making sure that we water in the morning is super important. That will reduce slug populations. Second thing that we can do is uh, we can actually put a slug bait down. So that slug bait is something that they'll eat, they'll consume, and they'll die. Slugs will not walk across copper. So sometimes you'll even see some people that will have copper tape around the base of some of their plants that will prevent slug damage. Slugs as well die to earth. So what we could do is take even crushed eggshells, putting them around the base of our hostas can reduce or really uh, reduce the risk of having slug damage. So those are some big things uh, to do. Uh, we got a little... Uh, follow up as well, because we were talking earlier with Ruth, my potted force bulbs attempt worked. Boom, 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 blooming success. That's good to know. We got Viola named after a flower. One of my favorite flowers is the way, by the way, how should soon should you start planting tomato seeds indoors before planting in your garden? So there are those tomato seeds are usually six to eight weeks before your last frost weight, frost date, even up to 10 days, 10 weeks, forgive me. So if you haven't planted them yet, get going. You're getting a little bit late. So those guys there should have been done uh, near mid-March is probably the ideal time to do them. But we're still the first week of April. So you figure you got the month of April. There's four weeks. We got the month of May. There's eight weeks. So you'd be planting them in your garden in the end of May and eight weeks time. But they're going to be fairly small plants at that time. So if you have some seeds and you're thinking about starting them, start them now. Uh, we got Mary Lou, uh, Mary Lou from Everett. Hi, Frankie from Everett. Hi, thank you too. Valerie's giving me an OMG as like what uh, Usher would do. Oh, he would always do that too. There's a song there. Uh, is ice bad for houseplants? This is a good question actually. Uh, thanks for asking it, Scully, by the way, as well. Uh, ice. So you hear the, you know, there's there's the the orchids, which are, you know, they're, they're, they're always on the tag recommending you doing two ice cubes per week to water an orchid. It's really good because it's letting you know that the exact volume, which is key. But if we think about it, orchids are from tropical rainforests. Is there ice in tropical rainforests? You might sense of area that's right here. Can it survive outdoors in Canada? No, because where it grows, there's no icy conditions. My jade plant, the same thing. So ice, ideally what your plants really want is room temperature water. Room temperature water is perfect. So what I do is after I'm done watering my plants, I fill my watering can up. I fill my watering can up and I just leave it in the kitchen filled. That will add a little bit of humidity to the room, not much. But as well, it also allows some of the impurities in the water to evaporate. It makes that water go to room temperature. And when I see my plants need water, I water them and I fill it back up. Just like that. So simple, so easy for you that's there. Uh, Wasaga Home Show, uh, giving a shout out to them as well, is April 15th and 16th if interested. Thank you. Diana won't be there, but Wasaga Beach is a great community. And it's good to see a lot of these local home shows that are coming back. I've already done the Toronto Home Show, the Very Home Show. I've already done the Simcoe Home Show as well. If you're watching and you are somebody who is a member of some of the home show committees and whatnot, I'm booked for spring this year. I'm still doing some stuff for fall. Uh, but if you're ever interested in having me come and attend and to speak, uh, you can just email me, frankie at frankieflowers.com. Uh, Valerie, I don't know if I'm totally familiar with this, but we'll go. The German orange tomato is the best. So it's the German orange tomato. So um, I like the Cherokee purple. I'm not familiar with German orange tomato. I'm actually going to look at it. The Cherokee purple tomato is almost like a black tomato and it has like this wonderful juicy fruit flavor. It's an heirloom tomato. The only challenge with that guy is it's indeterminate, meaning it's a vine type tomato. So the plant gets huge. So you need space. So 
So yours favorite is the German orange tomato. Mine is Cherokee purple. Anybody else out there have their favorite variety of tomato? Let us know. Pop it up here and I'll pop it up there as well. Uh, we got Janice. Hi, Janice. How are you? How are thee? Any tips on trying to stop squirrels from digging, digging, digging in my garden? I always joke. Squirrels, they are employed by garden centers. We send them out to destroy your plants. So you have to buy more. Joking. Squirrels. Yeah. So daffodils are poisonous to squirrels. So never plant tulips because squirrels love them. Uh, the way that sometimes what will work is I've actually had great success with top dressing my garden spaces where I have squirrel issues with the pelletized chicken manure. Uh, that pelletized chicken manure is odorless. It's actually calcium and a fertilizer. So it actually improves the plant material there, but sometimes that works as well. We also got a need to figure out what they don't like to see. So sometimes putting an owl up can help as well. Uh, if you're set on planting tulip bulbs and other bulbs that squirrels like, you can always plant them and then put chicken wire on top of them so that the plants will actually grow through the chicken wire, but the squirrels can't dig through the chicken wire. So there are some strategies to try to minimize the damage from squirrels that are out there. And then we plant those plants that squirrels don't like. That's really key as well. We have another comment and or question from Mary Ann. I planted my lettuce bowl garden today. I hope it's not too early. For lettuce bowls, it's not too early because what will happen is on those cooler days where we're above frost, where we don't have frosty conditions outside. So let's say that it's a 15 degree day, 10 to even 15 degree. Put that lettuce bowl outside. Those cool temperatures are going to be fantastic for it. And we've started the lettuce bowls in the greenhouse right now as well. So it's not too early for lettuce bowls. Uh, Janice, uh, giving another comment here as well. Haas is great and great for dividing and adding other spots to the garden and sharing with family and friends. Fantastic plant and you'll always have lots of hostas. We got Valerie. And once Valerie, don't be sorry, Valerie. Don't ever be sorry. Sorry, Frankie, for asking so much. I just love your half hour sessions. Valerie, that's why I'm here. Ask away. Like just ask away. Tracy Reynolds brings up a really good point about hostas as well. Love hosta leaves in my flower arrangement. Hosta leaves in the summertime, if you actually take some of those hosta leaves and you put them on the outside of your flower arrangement, it's that beautiful, almost tropical looking foliage, and it almost hugs a bouquet of flowers. They are fantastic to be using in cut flowers. And Tracy, thank you for that recommendation. We got Faith. Hi, Faith. How are you today? Hi, is it too late to put bulbs in pots? They are in my fridge. It's not too late to do that. As long as they've gone through their plunge period, you can put them in pots and you can put them outdoors and just let them uh, go through their natural process um, as well. Make sure that you're using a pot that has drainage holes and use a potting soil on those. So it's not too late. No, uh, those guys there uh, probably uh, will start growing almost immediately. As soon as they get a little bit of moisture, a little bit of warmth, they'll start to sprout. Uh, as long as they've been plunged properly, meant that they were put in the fridge to go through that dormancy period overall. What is the best light for a Thanksgiving cactus? So Thanksgiving cactus, Christmas cactus, they're all the same cacti. Um, the best light for them is in a room that's not direct light, but is a bright room. That's the best light for it to be in. A reminder, in order to get your cactus, your Christmas cactus or your Thanksgiving cactus to flower, it needs to also be triggered into bloom by the shortness of daylight hours. So as we head our way towards fall, our days get shorter, Christmas even shorter still. Having shorter daylight hours, shorter light that they receive, a cooler evening temperature, and cutting back a little bit on water is what sets the bud, and that's what's gonna get them to reflower for you. But as they're growing during the summer season, if you wanna put that guy outdoors, put it in part sun, like morning sun, and it'll survive in the pot outdoors, the average Thanksgiving cactus or Christmas cactus can live decades, decades. Samantha is giving a comment and or question out there. Samantha is saying, my snake plant broke at the root. Ouch, too much water maybe. Often with snake plants, it's when they're rotting at the root that is caused by too much water that's out there. Uh, Faith is saying ammonia is not true bleach, but ammonia, I would agree with you 100%, but ammonia is one of the components. So the whole idea of you using ammonia in your garden space is as an insecticide to kill as a cleanser, but it's actually used as an insecticide. We need to make sure if we're using it, let's say on hostas when they're sprouting up, that's the, some new tender foliage that's there can cause more harm than help. Um, Janice is saying that she uses eggshells for slugs. Yeah. Don't throw your eggshells away. Even when you're planting your tomatoes, crush them up, put them in the soil. When you plant your tomatoes, 
you're increasing the amount of calcium in the soil, which will reduce blossom and rot that are out there as well. Shelly is saying a, a comment and or question. This is going to be our last one for the evening. I had blight on my tomatoes last summer. What can I plant? Uh, what? When can I plant tomatoes again? And what should I plant in the bed this year? So um, we can plant tomatoes in another location. We don't want to plant them in the same spot. So crop rotation. What I would recommend in that spot is any type of leafy green. So you can use, you could do spinach, you could do leaf lettuce, you could do kale, anything that is a top green kind of plant that's an edible one. If you're growing your edibles, cabbage, you could use broccoli, do all those would be the ones that I would recommend. Some of the blights uh, are just environmental, meaning caused by weather. And so when you go to buy tomato plants, look for tomato plants that say on them VFN. So those are virus free. So sometimes some variety of tomato plants have a greater resistance to some of the blights, either the early blight or late blight. And you did with last summer, you did get a late blight, which almost everybody did. So I wouldn't worry about that, but you would want to do crop rotation because that's a proper way to minimize that. So we are at 31 minutes. I like to try to keep it at 30 minutes for all those that join this evening. Thank you, 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 and you. I will be back next Sunday at 7 p.m. to answer your garden questions. Once again, next weekend, April the 6th, which is Saturday, 2 p.m., you can join me in person at the Oakville Home Show at 2 p.m. So if you want to just type in the Oakville Home Show, all the information is there. Maybe I'll see you next Saturday. If not, I'll see you next Sunday. Keep blooming, keep growing. And a reminder, it's going to be wet. It's going to be ugly this week. But a reminder, April showers, hey, brings May flowers. And it's always a blooming good time.